Hey everyone, I just arrived in Wilmington, Delaware, and like I always do when I'm in a new city, I'm starting off at the local market. So this is the Chancery Market, and behind me you could see Kati Roll Walla. So I did not know what a Kati Roll is. I sort of know the ingredients, but I ordered the chicken tikka one. So there's roti on the outside, then there's a layer of egg on the inside, and then there's is cilantro sauce, and then getting a little bit closer, you can see the chicken tikka. So I'm told this place is a small franchise. It's also in, started in New Jersey. It's also in Houston, Texas. And they also gave me some samosa bites to sample with a tamarind sauce and also with a cilantro sauce. I believe it's the same cilantro sauce that's in here. So in my opinion, you can't go wrong with chicken tikka. Uh, just an observation, the bread is not crispy like I'm used to roti being. Uh, maybe the, uh, the egg has something to do with it. But I love the cilantro sauce. Um, whenever I go to an Indian restaurant and I get takeout, I always get an extra one to take home with me. But they also do other things at this place. Like this is a protein bowl, which is also with chicken tikka. It's got a yogurt, it's got a tamarind sauce. So um, they have quite a bit of variety for such a small stall in this little market here. All right, so I'm at the Riverfront Market, which is conveniently located near the Amtrak station. It's also uh, located near the Riverwalk. And this market here has a Thai place. I believe you say uh, Jin Wung, is that right? Yeah, Jin Wung. Okay, so Jin Wung Thai Cuisine. Um, I just met the owner and uh, you were nice enough to come and sit with me after, of course, I ordered this uh, special duck noodle soup, right? Yeah, duck noodle soup. Okay. That one. So, uh, first I have to ask you, Kun Shi Arai Ka? Saji Ka, Sawadi Ka. Saji Yindi Ti Dai Ruja Ka. Yindi Shen Gan Ka, Yindi Ti Dai Ruja Ka. Okay, so I got the duck noodle soup because I like it, I got it because it's on special. But what are some other dishes that we should try here at Jin Wung? Uh, we do, you mean like special dish? Anything like, like if somebody's coming for the first time like uh, me? Oh, yeah, uh, or more they order the Pad Thai. It's special, we, uh, we do like different Thai people in the Thai restaurant doing like crab meat, fried rice, shrimp and crab meat, fried rice. That's okay. uh, amazing for we do that, only one in Wilmington. Okay, yeah, that's great because we're uh, in crab country, I guess. We're, you know, we're in Delaware, which is next to Maryland, which is known for the crab. Yeah. And um, also I saw that you had something similar to Gui Tiao Kua Gai, but on the menu you call it, is it Pad Ki Mao? Pad Ki Mao, yeah. Some kind of similar, like, look like uh, Gui Tiao Kua Gai, yeah. That's the original, like, noodle, like a fried noodle with chicken. But here we do, like, Pad Ki Mao. We do, uh, yeah, the same kind, but different little bit, like we do like flavor spicy. Yeah, with your kuo kai, like not spicy. Yeah, my pet, my, my pet. My pet, yeah. Okay, well, I am going to try this duck noodle soup. And sure. I'm going to say like, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, Kap kun mak mak ka. Uh, yin di ka, yin di ka. All right, yin lagon. Kap kun ka. So I really got lucky today. This market only has about six or seven stalls and two of them are two of my three favorite foods in the world. I just had Thai duck noodle soup uh, from the vendor down here. And now I'm with Juliana at Pachamama and I got uh, yuca frita and I got the, uh, is this pollo a la brasa? Yeah. Okay, so um, before I even try this, I wanna ask you, why is Peruvian chicken better than any other chicken? At least Peruvian roasted chicken. Was the way how we marinate the chicken. We, we use it, our ingredients is imported from Peru. We, we marinate the chicken uh, for 24 hours. Then we cook in, a, in the roaster oven. And we give it like a, a smoke flavor. The other thing is the way how we marinate the chicken too. It's go underneath the skin, inside the chicken. You rub it really nice outside. So it's like a, the, the, the hard we put on the, on the chicken. Right, because even if you eat the chicken without the skin, it still has flavor. Yes. 
And by the way, you included two sauces, which I rarely use. This is her... Uh, this is ají amarillo, ají yeah. pollera. Is a, we use, also, we use imported peppers. So okay. this mild, mild sauce, and the other one's ricotta. Ricotta is like a type of uh, habanero, but it's more spicy. It's like a tapayoli, so it's really good and spicy. Though. Is it strange that I usually just eat the chicken with no sauce because I like the flavor? Oh, the chicken is so good. Some people say, oh, we don't want it, but the sauce is so good. So, but at the same time, they want to use it like a dipping for your size, you know, like your yuca or fries. So, by the way, what does Pachamama mean? Oh, Pachamama is like a mother earth. Mother it's, earth. Um, they, there's an um, Inca's uh, uh, language, the original language from Peru, was the Quechua. So this too, that's why we call Pachamama the place, because everything we make here is made uh, uh, from starch. It's a homemade, everything is fresh. All the, all the again, the in ingredients is exported from Peru. Okay, so I think it's time I try the chicken. Okay, and you want to love your chicken. Thank okay, you. let's find out. Now again, I don't think you. Sorry, I don't think you really need sauce for this. Now I don't expect you to give up your trade secret, but what can you just name like one ingredient that's really important in the marinade for the chicken? Oh, we bring some um, Peruvian peppers from Peru, and also we put like a salt and pepper, which is the base for everything. And uh, that's what makes it uh, nice and crispy on the skin. Yes, yeah, I the, took some skin with we that. We use some beer too for the marinade. Beer like, like cerveza? Black, yes, cerveza negra, black beer. And a little bit of the wine. Okay. For All me, right. kitchen is no, is no any secret, the owner, you know? It's like the love of how much you put your heart and everything you make on the, on the, on the when you cook. I think it's the key of the ingredients on the, the secret for the, for the dishes. All right, well, again, if you ever come to this, uh, if you ever come to Wilmington, if you arrive by Amtrak, you could walk here. You could also park here for two hours. And you definitely have to try the Thai. They're both on the same side. You got to try the Thai place and you got to try Pachamama. Thank you. Yes, stop into Pachamama. Okay, de nada. So I asked the owner of Jean Wong at the Riverfront Market where you can get some of the ingredients for some of my favorite Thai dishes. And she pointed me towards the Asia supermarket, which is about a 20 minute drive from the market and from the Hyatt. And here's where you can get ingredients to make uh, some of my favorite Southeast Asian dishes. You can get things here like banana flour. You could get green papaya to make a papaya salad. And you can also get snacks. I'm actually gonna take these on the road with me. This is tempura seaweed smoked barbecue flavor. Bardea Food and Drink is located in downtown Wilmington along Market Street, which some locals refer to as Restaurant Row. So the chef from this restaurant is a two-time James Beard nominated chef, and there's also a steakhouse next door. Now, I'm trying to do the best of both worlds. I'm at Food and Drink, but I ordered the ribeye because I'm trying to get the steakhouse experience. Uh, just look at the size of this. I'm sure this is enough for two or three people and um, they have like a little demi-glaze on the top and I'm going to take a bite and see what this is like. Beautiful Piedmontese ribeye. So it's super tender. You can tell it's a good cut. You don't even need sauce. There's a little bit on the top but the chef, I'm sorry, the server, made sure that you only put a little bit on. So uh, yeah, this is definitely a good choice here. The historic village of Centerville is just five miles from Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. I'm on the Delaware side of the border and I'm at Buckley's Tavern. So uh, this place is kind of famous for their mushroom soup. So uh, what's really interesting about the mushroom soup is uh, Kennett Square does about half of the mushroom production in the country. I believe it's over 500 million tons or something like that every year of mushrooms to the point where there's a mushroom festival just five miles from where I'm at right now. And Centerville, I, it may technically be part of Wilmington, I believe it's unincorporated, but if you take a look here, um, Buckley's, this is the sign, and then if you look, uh, there's like a really quaint kind of main street, really quiet. Mm. So the soup is not quite what I was expecting. Um, it's not that rich. Uh, when you hear cream, you think it could be on the rich side. This is not. And the mushrooms, they're diced super thin. But if you look, I got a bowl, not that big, and they have a cup which is even smaller. So you should definitely start with that. 
So before I even arrived in Wilmington, I've been hearing about this thing called tomato pie. And I'm at a bakery called Serpy's, as you could read from Dominic's shirt. Um, and Dominic, I was hoping you could explain what tomato pie is for a New to a New Yorker. Uh, tomato pie goes way back. My father started a business in 1952. You start making the tomato pie and it's, it's, it sells like wildfire. I mean, uh, it's a cold pie. You know, everybody says, uh, I want it hot, but no, tomato pie needs to be eaten cold, room temperature. Very tasty, very enjoyable. There's no cheese, no pepperoni on it, so it's very healthy too. So I've been standing here for about 20 minutes waiting for new ones to come out. And in, the, in those like 15, 20 minutes, one pie was just gone. Um, I notice a mix of center slices and end slices. Are the center slices the most popular? Yeah, believe it or not, uh, we have people in, in both, both, like both, I'm sorry. They like both because some people like it crusty, some people don't like the crust. And what does it taste like for someone who's never had it? Is the bottom crunchy? It's uh, semi-crunchy, a little on the soft side, semi-crunchy. But it's, uh, it's uh, a light dough and it uh, has tomatoes and all the ingredients and it's all secret ingredients I put in there. I can't secret ingredients, but I can tell it's, uh, it looks like pizza without the sauce, but I'm sure there's more to it. There's more to it, yes. Okay, all right, well, I'm gonna be getting some and I look forward to trying it. Thank you very much, Dominic. Oh, I thank you very much. So here's what the tomato pie actually looks like up close. Mmm. Mmm. So the bottom is crispy. Dominic tells me it's probably gonna stay like that. I know he doesn't give away trade secrets, but I could definitely see tiny, tiny minced pieces of garlic in there. Um, definitely the tomatoes have flavor. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, it's not the same as if you went to a Neapolitan style pizzeria and got marinara because it's, um, it's square and it's definitely different. It's something you should definitely try when you're in Delaware. I'm at Mrs. Rubino's in Wilmington's Little Italy. So I heard about this place through uh, a writer in Philadelphia. And uh, behind me a few minutes ago, there was just somebody here from Brooklyn. So this is one of those restaurants people travel for. Kind of reminds me of a couple places I tried in Atlantic City. Uh, here's the menu, and I'm interested in trying their red sauce. So I got the veal parmesan. Just take a look at the size of that. And then for my side, I got the ravioli, which uh, also came highly recommended. So uh, this is a really just old school place. If you take a look around, um, they have family photos um, on the walls. And then up above my head here, there is a newspaper article, a framed black and white newspaper article from all the way back in 1946. Mm. So the veal is pounded super thin. Uh, it's kind of crispy. I'm guessing it's uh, pan fried. And the sauce also, I want to say something about that. Um, it's not too sweet, it's not too salty. It's just right. I would love to take some of this home. So while tomato pie came the most highly recommended in Wilmington, I couldn't come here without trying a grotto pizza. Now trying is not necessarily the right word because Harvey's Lake, Pennsylvania is where grotto pizza started in 1960. That's the county I was born in a few years later, many years later maybe. And uh, so I've been eating this pizza for about a quarter century. So one thing that's unique about Grotto Pizza is the cheese blend. So that's cheddar cheese. It's a mix of aged cheddar and newer cheddar cheese. And the sauce and the cheese, instead of having the cheese on top of the sauce, it's put in a circular uh, shape. So while the Grotto locations have a sports bar type of feel, if you do want to eat the pizza at home, you could do what I just did. I ordered mine half baked. So you can see it's the same pizza, just not fully cooked. And you take this home and you heat it at 425. So I got a 12 inch because that's the size of the pizza stone I have at home. And it gets the crust uh, nice and crispy. And uh, this is what I've been doing for probably 25 years and I'm happy to be able to do it in Wilmington. So of all the suggestions I got from Wilmington, two steakhouses came the most highly recommended. One was Bardea, which I had a chance to try the night I got here. I didn't try the steakhouse, but I tried uh, the food and drink spot. 
But the others is the spot where I'm at now. It's Walter's. So um, the people who did suggest this place suggested that I try the prime rib. So I ordered the 24 ounce, which I'm gonna show you in a second. This has to be two and a half inches thick if you take a look right here. Um, and I was asked something I've never been asked before when it came to prime rib. Um, to be honest, I'm used to getting it at the buffet, but I was asked if I wanted the chuck side or the sirloin side. So I ended up getting the sirloin side, but uh, my test is gonna be, does it need any sauce? Because I said no when they asked if I wanted horseradish or not. Okay, so even the middle part came apart very easy without having to cut it much. It's definitely uh, more tender than the prime rib I'm used to. Not that I eat it that often, but it's definitely more tender. The only thing I'm gonna do is sprinkle a tiny bit of salt on the top. But um, other than that, you definitely don't need sauce on this. So when I was in Little Italy, I saw a handful of water ice stops, kind of reminded me of Philly, but I did not go to any of those on this trip. Instead, I drove out to, I believe I'm in Newark. Uh, I'm a little bit outside of Wilmington, but I'm at Woodside farm creamery and this is the place that the most people have told me I had to come to. So you can see um, it doesn't take long to get into a rural area when you're leaving Wilmington and this is no exception really. So if you take a look here that's the sign but then off in the distance here when it's warmer out you'll start to see cows there and the cows on this farm are the ones that they use to make the ice cream so uh, the dairy comes from those cows I'm trying a few. I'm trying uh, cookie dough, cappuccino crunch, and lemon. We'll see how these are. Okay. So the cookie dough bites are soft and chewy. Um, I also sampled the motor oil, which is the flavor that a few of you recommended. So I tried the motor oil. There are a couple other flavors, including one that kind of mixes all the flavors in one. Um, a couple dozen different flavors here. Um, I'm gonna get a pint of the salted caramel to take home with me. Out of all the flavors I've tried, that's been my favorite. Uh, motor oil and butter brickle are good as well. But yeah, um, you were right. This place is definitely worth a little detour outside of Wilmington. So my time here in Wilmington has come to an end. I'm at the Amtrak station. I'm gonna say goodbye. If you like this video, please click subscribe. I got more trips coming up like Toronto, I'm uh, going to be heading back to Maryland again, and I look forward to sharing more videos with you.